so that's one of those things that like when people ask me like should they do the highland games or what do they think and like you know people like was it safe i'm like look if you're not if you're not athletic enough to throw a thing out of your hand and not get killed by it maybe this isn't the sport for you right <laughs> Between the Reps with Brooke Entz and Gina Chancharulo is a CastBox original produced alongside Studio 71. CastBox is the fastest growing and highest rated podcast app on both iOS and Android, where you can find all your favorite podcasts. You can listen to Between the Reps wherever you get your podcasts, but we hope you'll give CastBox a shot. We think it's the best. I remember when I was little, in like elementary school, I definitely remember going to the bathroom with my friends and showing off our underwear we were wearing. Nice. Oh, okay. Okay. But that's like as far as we took it. So when I was mm-hmm. much... Well, you say it like that, like everyone else has a different story. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like well, wait, we're talking about like vaginas. Like I literally yeah. didn't fully understand like that, like you said, Matt, that vaginas are like snowflakes, snowflakes or yes, fingerprints. very different. <laughs> we, should, very different. we should print them. <laughs> Dude, I feel like for criminals. Oh my god! What if like that was that was the like we didn't roll ink on it. We and did it. We, did, print. we did art an art show and all it is is prints of like your stamp. Someone's definitely done that. Yeah. Has to. Have if not it. of your they vagina. Should. What they yeah. should do is that oh. for the Hollywood Walk of Fame instead of handprints. <laughs> <laughs> and then for dudes, it's just balls. Just a dong. Can you imagine uh, being Matt out came on today? Like, he didn't realize he was our expert on vaginas. Yeah. yeah. So today we're talking about vaginas. Um, uh, yeah. Well, he would be more of an expert. You see more. I mean, I can't even see mine unless I'm like. That's true. That's true. I've definitely I mean, in my in front. my life I've been closer to one than I imagine either of you have. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know yeah. how you party. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> hey. I, I, I'm not against, yeah. Right. Party's not against. Party. I always said I'd saying. be the most selfish lesbian. I saw a T-shirt the other day that said. I'm not gay, but twenty dollars is twenty dollars. No, I'm not gay; I just like to party. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, uh, dongs are relatively relatively all the same. Occasionally, you get an outlier, and you're like, "Oh, fascinating! What do you do with that? <laughs> Where does That's that go?" Terrifying. But like the first time I realized like vaginas were different uh-huh. was the the real first time that like I full like fully changed in front of other girls. So like I grew up dancing. So like quick changes or kind of getting almost naked yeah. was a super normal. Like I definitely You're a nudist. I'm a nudist. You are a nudist. You literally like <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the clothes. She walks around naked the whole time. All the time. All the time. Fair. Yeah. I remember my best one of my best friends and she was a roommate of mine in college. She used to <laughs> <laughs> she loved it because like She'd come home like not have her key, and I would oh, I would always greet her in the nude. <laughs> it's always naked. That does not surprise me. So. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome home. Yeah. It's One confidence. Day, this One is day, all of this will be yours. <laughs> it's, it's a weird, weird butler you have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. But yeah, first time changing clothes, and I thought to myself, I'm not gonna direct. I'm not gonna look at it. Yeah, you don't want to look like you're. Yeah, you don't want to glance. Too and long. I don't want to like for you to know that I'm looking at it mm-hmm. because if you ask me what I'm looking at or my opinion, I don't know if I could like be honest. You're hip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, like someone's going to be like, so what do you think? <laughs> I mean, I might. So really, yeah. what do you think? Like with you, I might yeah. be like, will you, will you check me out? Yeah, yeah. no, you're okay. good. What you're do you good. think this thing looks like? first time, glanced it. <laughs> Is it glanced, a disaster? Right? <laughs> what, what, what am I working with here? Yeah. First time, glanced and thought, huh, huh. Different. Yeah. Than mine. Well, I guess I realized that I got into porn probably way earlier than a human should have. What do you mean if you got into it, you were just watching Not it? participating. Dabbling? <laughs> Dabbling? I lived in Chatsworth for no, quite some time. I uh, found a plethora of porn at a young age. Okay. And then definitely didn't shape my probably as a sex, sexual appetite the correct way, okay, if I well, was guessing. Okay, well, on that note, <laughs> on, that yeah. note <laughs> on that note, everybody, welcome, welcome to Between the Reps. Between the reps. <laughs> With Brooke, With and Brooke and Gina. And we have a guest today, a really good friend of mine. His name is Matt Vincent. And Matt. Welcome, Matt. Yeah, he. Welcome. We, now that you've like learned. A welcome, Matt? Like you'd step on. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Um, that was a good pun. More like, more like a welcome. If you were a welcome, Matt, mm-hmm. you'd be one that I'd have on the inside of the house that people already wipe their shoes on the outside, Matt. Nice. You know, you'd be the inside, Matt. And more, I would be made of like memory foam. <laughs> like memory cushy. foam. Oh, soft. <laughs> yeah, you'd step in, you'd be like, I'll stay here. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe around where your name also is. Also heated. Yeah, warm. 
but not too thick though because you used to be a fat mat you used to be a bit chunkier yeah which i didn't i thought i had recognized him i met i met you what 2015 yeah you met a different version of yeah it, like a one point and i said i th- i think i i think i've met you before you like you look familiar and you're like oh yeah yeah we met in tahoe and i was like oh my god and you're like i was a lot fatter, was a lot fatter, <laughs> fatter, back, a lot then. fatter back then that's what they call yeah. it when you lose well, you look 60 amazing. pounds of adipose tissue that's <laughs> what you got rid of <laughs> well matt vincent is a two times world champ highland games yeah and we are on the podcast today besides just talking a little bit about I mean, everything about you and a lot of the different businesses that you are doing and a lot of different fitness and health backgrounds that you have. But we are going to touch base on the Highland Games because one, honestly, the only stuff that I even know about it is from when we've talked about it. Right. Gina has no idea about it. No clue. Yeah, it's and a, I think, it's I think most people, people I just feel like it's a people Especially in the United States. Like throwing locks. You're not wrong. Okay. You're not, you're not <laughs> far off. Yeah. I'm like, okay. That's how I just, when yeah. people are like, Highland Games, huh? And, and then they immediately think it's the stone lifting, like strong man, and then you have to correct them. Um, and you're like, you know, chubby guys and kids throw them a telephone pole, and they're like, all right. And I'm like, well, there's eight other events, too, and we right. do all those. Okay, so why don't we, we'll start there. We'll go over we'll the actually, We'll actually start with Highland Games first. Perfect. Highland Games talk. Yeah, the um, Highland Games, first of all, before we get the events, just how'd you start? So I was a thrower in college. So okay. I shot disc hammer at uh, LSU. And then I was super average at all three of those. And uh, <laughs> well, it's not wrong to say that. Like, if you were 10% better than me as a collegiate thrower, you would have thrown, I don't know, like 66 feet, which is far enough to kind of chase it post-collegiately and, like, maybe kid yourself about going to trials or the Olympics. Uh-huh. And then if you were 10% worse than me, you were terrible. Yeah. So, yeah. Average. average. <laughs> In three okay. sports. Perfect. So- you know, and, and all three events. And then got out of that. Uh, took a few years off of lifting and did a bike shop thing for a while, and then uh, got back into lifting during what Strongman. Kind of what kind of bikes? So, um, like road bikes, mountain okay. bikes. I owned a bicycle shop for four or five years. And then when that failed, um, got back into training and did Strongman for a couple of years, did powerlifting for a couple of years, uh, did some weightlifting, and then finally did a Highland Games and really liked it and realized I was good at it since if you were a thrower in college, it's like cheating. Yeah, you're going into it knowing how to do things already, mm-hmm. and so and having just like a full athletic background. I mean, you knew how to you know how to move your body with lo- like all different types of load, especially coming from strongman competition. Right, and so I was already like strong enough things. to do it. And then with the throwing background and knowing how to apply force like that to a stone or a shot put or any of that, like it's a real easy transition. Is the Highland? I mean, did you do your first competition? In the states, yeah, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so most of the time I competed was in the states. Okay, um, they have them like every yeah, weekend. You think of like Scotland. Well, yeah, 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 of course. And so, so like, they're everywhere, everywhere. Okay, and so they have them as usually like part of big festivals. So it's like a rena- Renaissance festival. I've been to a Renaissance oh, festival. Okay. And they, they did have that there actually. Yeah, so that's typically where we would compete. Um, so I did <clears> a couple <throat> years as an amateur, uh, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. 2009, 2010 were like the first full seasons I did. And then 2011, uh, I got to go to, I won an amateur world championship. And then two weeks later, went to the professional world championship, which was a shock. I was supposed to go the following year, but they were just like, you're there in two weeks. I'm like, sick. (laughs) (laughs) You're ahead of schedule. Yeah. So showed up, threw well, took second. Where was that? Where um, is that at? Where do they usually have that at? Worlds that year was at Loon Mountain in uh, New Hampshire. Oh, okay. Okay. So... So they vary the states, every year. Right, worlds, okay. worlds rotates. Um, it was in 2012, was the first full year as a professional, uh, through and then won a world championship in Fergus, Ontario. And then 2013, took second. 2014, I won again in Scotland. Yeah, because I, I remember oh, we had talked cool. about that, and I knew that you had been over there. So was that the, kind of the first fun. time you competed over there? No, I'd gone... I'd gone the year before in 13 uh, and did a couple games. Okay. So I would get invited over, and if it's different over there. So instead of it being like every weekend and part of a festival, you could do like three in a week. Oh, okay. Oh. So. Is it part of a festival over there too? Yeah, or but is the it... festivals are smaller. And so it's a little so bit less. So do they have more experience thing. doing it because they're doing it more often? Yeah. Or because it's, I, I yes guess, and I, no. I feel right. like it's from there. It, they're they're good at it, right? Like yeah. they're technically good at the sport, but they don't have the same depth that we do athletically because there's just not as many people. Got okay. it. Yeah. We have a, a lot of folks in the states that are guys like me that weren't great throwers in college that are still looking for a thing to do. Mm-hmm. Right. 
And so some of them make their way into the Highland Games and do real well. And you won that one. I won the one in Scotland, yeah. So Worlds That's in Scotland cool. was pretty cool. That is cool. cool. And both of the Worlds that I did like came down to like the last event, last throw, which were real fun. So there's eight, eight events. So what, yeah, what so are we, they? So we throw nine total events. Um, so we throw two stones, look just like the shot put. Okay. Uh, one of them you throw standing. It's a heavier stone, like 22 pounds. Then we throw a lighter one that you get full approach, so you can spin or glide or whatever it is. And that one's 16. Um, we throw two weights for distance. And so it's basically a steel block, a couple lengths of chain, and a ring handle on it. And you hold the ha- handle Yeah, so you thing. throw it with one hand, and you throw it. It kind of looks like the discus. Okay. Um, so two spins and throw it. So you throw a 28-pound as a light, and you throw a heavy, which is 56. And then we throw two hammers, which is a 22- or 16-pound ball on the end of a stick. Mm-hmm. And so you stand still and swing it around your head and throw it as far as you can. And then, so that's six events. We throw a 56 over a bar for height. We throw the caber, which is the telephone pole that everyone's mostly familiar okay. with. Okay, the big, yeah. you have to like you cradle it yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, pick yeah. it up off the ground and you run with it and try to flip it in uh-huh. the other end. Um, and then we occasionally, not so much in Scotland, but in the States, we throw a lot in an event called the sheaf, which is like a 20-pound burlap bag that you throw with a pitchfork for height. Whoa. Oh. So, yeah, I traveled with a pitchfork as athletic gear. <laughs> yes. I have my own pitchfork. No big deal. And I bitch about, like, when I travel for, <laughs> like, the gear you oh, have to bring. God, Just because, I traveled like, <laughs> with so much stuff. Dude. Did like, you drive everywhere? No. No. I flew, I flew How everywhere many bags in the States. did so, you take? one, but what I <laughs> buy have- is... This big rolling plastic toolbox, like from <clears throat> from Home Depot, uh-huh. and so I've got boots, soccer cleats, spikes, gloves, a belt, chalk, tacky spray, uh, tape, everything in there. Mm-hmm. Knee sleeves, fucking belt, all the regular yeah. bullshit too, right? Mm-hmm. And it it doesn't check in as oversized. So no, as long as you no. can keep it under 50 pounds, you just put locks on it and send it. Nice. And they will destroy them. <laughs> Jeez, the airport is not friendly to things. No. How often did you travel for that? So I would compete like 22, 23 times a year. Oh, damn. That's yeah. a lot. So it's basically almost every weekend from like May till the last weekend of September. Damn. And then, I mean, coming from... How, how is it on your body, I guess, like training-wise? Training-wise, I never found it too bad because nothing we're throwing is real heavy. Yeah. So, I mean, the heaviest thing's 56 pounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, compared to hitting a max clean or any of that, like, it's not as CNS frying. And so, and then the weight says I'm doing it. Say, the further I get into the season, like, I'm not trying to lift real heavy because I need to move fast. Mm-hmm. And so, you can do it a lot more. It's not nearly as big beat up on you like trying to do a powerlifting meet like you could yeah. maybe do four real powerlifting meets a year and strongman about the same like if you did six strongman shows a year like you're trashed yeah but i could easily throw four or five weekends in a row i mean i would train up until thursday compete you know fly friday compete saturday mm-hmm. fly home sunday or either compete saturday sunday fly home monday mm-hmm. and then i'm back in the gym monday and depending on time of the season, like, I may even train Friday okay, and train completely through that game. You basically have to say, like, of these 23 games I have this year or 20 games, these three matter. Mm-hmm. And I will set up a peak in my cycle to do the best at those. Okay. What is, like, a, I guess a training day look like for you? So if and I'm going to – Even more than that, like, let's that. go, like, a yeah, training like, day, you... but then also explain, like, how you might break up your week because I imagine – so I ran like different blocks, right? Like, okay. so I ran either like a max strength block or a max power speed block. And so power speed would be kind of more what I'm doing in season. So I'd run like four weeks on and then a deload week and then switch blocks. And so what I'm trying to accomplish with that is move weight as fast as I can. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to go anything over like 75% for probably, you know, 12 triples or 10 doubles or something like that, but keep the rest relatively short. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to throw four days a week. And if I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw three events in a day. So I'll throw, like, light stone, heavy weight, light hammer, or mix it up. So I never really trained caber. It's just too much of a pain in the ass, and especially because I trained by myself. 
Um, I was just going to ask that. Like, where are you training with all this equipment? I just threw in a field near my house. <laughs> Let's say, like you, a, you just back drag back all that stuff out? Yeah, I just drive. I just kept a, I kept my box full of gear in the back yeah. of my truck because I was also traveling for work at the time a lot. And so, like, I would throw in the back of a parking lot, like at a hotel, and then well, like, I, I, I like remem- I remember like, like actually passerby? seeing you yeah. practicing a lot of that, and in Tahoe. Yeah, yeah, randos you were would show stuff up and outside. just be like, "Oh, what are you doing?" I'm like, "Fuck, man, nothing." I'm just throwing. Get out of, just get out of here. Imagine just walking through a parking lot and you're like, what the hell is that dude well, doing? Like, you had you had that you have a thing that's like on a a long chain. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, you, but you, you don't you do the like the Right. So you throw it, yeah, one handed, you hook grip into it and throw do it. Do you as circle far as you with it? Yep. Come on. Not yeah. above like your head, a like a lasso <laughs> as much. <laughs> It'd be Not a bold like technique. <laughs> <laughs> like Tonto would jump on it. Okay. Got it. You it's just like I when I was working at Coyote Ugly. Oh my God. I'm just going to train Gina. Like, you know what would happen with like me or you for sure, but definitely you, but actually definitely me because I've, I've done this with a golf club. We'd what? attempt. Oh. And then it would slip out of our hands. Oh, mm-hmm. that happens. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it happens, Forward. except for it weighs yeah, like I'd 56 hurt somebody. pounds. Yeah. Hurt myself. I've seen people get their shit ruined. Oh. I feel like it would like swing around and smack myself in the back of the head or something. So that's <laughs> one of those things that like when people ask me like should they do the Highland Games or what do they think and like you know people like was well, it safe? I'm like look if you're not ath- if you're not athletic enough to throw a thing out of your hand and not get killed by it, maybe this isn't the sport for you. Right? <laughs> maybe this isn't for you. <laughs> maybe say, how go does back that to aver- Coyote Ugly? <laughs> maybe we stick to computer. How does games? the average <laughs> Joe get into? Oh yeah. How you know does- what I mean? Like how do you get into that? So I mean. What I always like give if advice. If I wanted to go, I mean, because, you know. Yeah, so I get a bunch of people, like fair. someone yeah. who's definitely trained a little bit, hasn't thrown, mm-hmm. like, I'd like to do a Highland Games. It looks fun. I'm like, all right, find one in your area, sign up as a novice, go compete. You don't even fucking train. Don't bother. Just go, go do it. Go watch what they're doing and just go, try to follow go along. Go be terrible. Yeah, go be terrible. Go be like terrible it. at it and see if you have any fun in it, like in the actual competition environment and the people that you're around. Then go meet people who train it from yeah. your area. And then from there, decide if you want to keep doing it. But don't invest all this time in the sport before, like, what what numbers do I need to go compete? Like, it's your first yeah, competition. Sure. It's you're like you're doing suck. like a pickup game. Yeah. Right. You're yeah, going to suck gonna... at your first competition anyway. Yeah. So let's get to competition 100 as quickly as we can. Yeah. Like, just do it. Yeah. Just go and do it and be terrible at it. Because with sports or any of that, like, you're only allowed to be a total kook for so long. So just go be a kook and fully embrace it and, like, check some, your ego. At some point, people are going to be like, all right. Yeah, quit borrowing chalk from everyone, asshole. Bring your own stuff. Like, <laughs> Where's your, where's your tool? Get your shit right. together. Yeah, like, you didn't even bring a kilt. You just have some weird bath towel. Like, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't ideal. They'll set you straight. But, like, if you show up the first time oh, looking it. like you know what you're doing, <laughs> you don't. Everyone's yeah. going to know. So just embrace the fact that you're terrible at this. <laughs> so when, um, I guess, when you... How were you introduced to it? I think as a thrower, like, you kind of essentially know that it exists. Okay. Like, through college, like, yeah. it's one of those things of, like, oh, what's this thing? It's this like a natural other... progression. Yeah, well, yeah. it's not, it's, <laughs> it's where average throwers can go to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that, it's not like this, but we watched that show on Netflix, you know, it's called After Porn. Oh, oh nice. Oh, my God. Dude, it's, it's good a, stuff. It's Whoa, a weird so fucked up it. show. That's a weird profession crazy but i watched it thinking like oh this will be interesting and i told brooke i was like i almost wish i didn't watch it It was like so depressing it to is me. super depressing god it was horrible that's was that's one of the people i want to watch. have on the podcast i'd really like to have an ex porn star maybe not even ex current i'm oh. just fascinated <laughs> yeah yeah because huh. that's a well, real all weird job stories. well in that show they it was also really crazy to see and like hear from people that they were in it in the 90s like a little bit in yeah. the late 80s, but then into the 90s. And even people that are currently doing it still say that it was its best at its peak in the 90s. Weird. Well, they were saying this, the, the stuff that you have to do now. Yeah. And they were also saying like a lot of the girls that don't, that are much older and they were like the girls, what was it? Vivid girls yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the 90s. I mean, um, that's what I heard they were. They were oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, <laughs> didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have any of those. Shit. I had none of those. But like uh, they were saying, almost saying like, the stuff that girls and guys um, now that they're just doing or like is like 
well, quite a bit beyond like what they ever did. Of course. Almost like yeah. um, they were like non negotiables back then. Yeah. Now it's just like crazy. It's well, like anything goes. I mean, like progression of any sport, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. We're like, what? You can't clean 100 true. kilos? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Yeah. We, we used to just do the bar and everyone was stoked with that. That's true. That's true. But that's, uh, I mean, it's. It's not ever like porn's going to swing back to like what the audience really wants is like, we're just looking for classy nudes like Playboy. <laughs> right, that's true. That's not where we're going. Just looking for some class. The appetite is different. No, it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, but They're back trying to look at people's insides now. <laughs> <laughs> but Anyways, sorry about I getting a, into porn. Go yeah, back. Bring us back and we're going to take a quick break. Oh. No, you, never mind. Bring us back. Bring oh. us off the porn talk and then okay. we'll take yeah. a quick break. I had a question. Are there like certain age groups for. Ooh. Yes. So there is a master's category. So over 40. Okay. And then they have a bunch so that's split up. So is it just like up. 18 to 39 and then 40 and up? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. So you've mm-hmm. got, you have different classes. So you have novice, which is, you've never done this before, mm-hmm. compete there. Um, then you have a C class, which is better than novice. And then okay. you have a B class, which is better than C. So typically, like, if you win a novice game, you move up. You now go to compete as a C. Okay. Uh, if you win a C game, compete as Bs. Up. When you win a B, compete as an A, except for... Once you get to an A, like if you win an A group, that's not necessarily like you get to turn pro. Turning professional in the Highland Games is a little weird. It's very much just like, I'm I'm professional at this. Wait, what? You just like raise your hand and then you get to you, do it, sir. <laughs> right? But it's and you it, get I a do. professional career. I do. And you get a professional career. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of like that. Like you make the decision when you want to turn pro, oh. and it's. But you also every game's invite only. Oh, oh so, okay. If you're not throwing well enough to get invites, and they're not all based on merit, a lot of them are kind of the same 10 people have gone to for a decade, and essentially someone has to die for there to be an opening right. for anyone <laughs> right, to yeah. get in the game. It's like the politics yeah. of it. Like if you're a top, like if you're the number 12 pro in the country, like it's going to be tricky to fill your season. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a quick break and we'll come back. Maybe finish up on the Highland stuff, and then let's. I really want to talk about your podcast. Yes. And your clothing brand. Ooh. And some other stuff you got going on. Cool. Sweet. We'll be back. This episode of Between the Reps is brought to you by Care of. Care of is a monthly delivery service, Gina, that brings you vitamins. You can take an online quiz to get find out exactly what you need. I think that you actually need to add some new stuff into your monthly subscription. Uh, currently, <laughs> I take, think yeah. the newest thing that I started adding into my diet is iron. Because if you didn't see me naked in the shower this morning, I'm covered in bruises. <laughs> I am covered. <laughs> you are a little bit. Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service that delivers completely personalized vitamin and supplement packs right to your door. This year, make health and wellness a top priority with the help of Care Of's monthly subscription vitamin service, whether you're focused on glowing skin, Ooh, which me. who doesn't love glowing skin, boosting your energy levels, I need that. Yeah, you do. Getting more sleep, definitely need that. I or generally that. being healthy. You definitely need to do this whole <laughs> new year, new me. <laughs> new year, new me, guys. New year, new me. I'm going to have glowing skin from this day on out. <laughs> Super easy to use. You go to the website. They give you this quiz that asks you all kinds of questions that has to do with your health. The quiz is really, really fun, interactive. The questions are fun. Um, you learn things about yourself that you probably didn't really pay attention to before and didn't realize that they had anything to do with your health. Care of's fun online quiz asks you about your diet, health goals, and lifestyle choices. And it only takes about five minutes. And at the end of it, they're going to recommend all the things that you may need. You do not need to purchase or add all of those things to your monthly subscription. But you can definitely see the recommendations, take some of those recommendations or ignore them. And do, you do can you cha- with them. and you can change it. You can mm-hmm. always change your uh, your month your monthly subscription. Well, I like that uh, care of puts honesty first, providing all the research that supports each of the recommendations backed by a scientific advisory board. They have vegan and vegetarian supplement options available to match your dietary needs. I think that's very important. Mm-hmm. Um A portion of every sale goes toward the Good Plus Foundation, which provides expecting mothers in need with valuable prenatal vitamins. Anytime we can help anyone in need. I'm super pumped. So hopefully you guys want to take take that quiz and uh, start taking care of your diet. Take your take your health into your own hands. Take advantage of this month's special new year offer. For 50% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins, go to takecareof.com and enter the promo code REPS. 50 R E P S 
1-800-227-5050. Again, take advantage of this month's special New Year's offer for 50% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins. Go to takecareof.com slash reps50. Oh, hey, we're back. And now I'm going to talk about wipes. Talk about wipes real quick. All right. Uh, when we transitioned from toilet paper at my house to wipes, have we transitioned to bidets yet? No, but I. But they <laughs> I don't do. I want to talk about. It. Oh, I don't want to. I have a really bad bidet story, but I want to tell it. How do you? What Let's you just fuck? say I got it confused with it? a regular toilet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Well, I'm not going to give any more detail. Oh, my yeah, God. It was, you know, when, it was no. when she was with me in uh, you have to Italy. You one of those out of there. Nope, not going to finish it. I'm just going to oh, let, no. let, leave that to your imagination. I've decided that uh, I've, I've purchased now bidets <laughs> and will have them on every toilet that I regularly use. I will say, I mean, I've, I've seen them. The first time I saw one was actually my parents bought a house in San Diego. And we went in and the master bathroom had the two toilets. Hmm. And it had the toilet on the left and the bidet on the right. And that was the first time. And I thought it was so funny. I was in there just like... What is this thing? Like, I thought it was what? a sink. It's it a fountain. Like, it looks what is like a, a drinking fountain. Don't drink out of that. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. And then, you know, I, I've been out of the country quite a bit, so you see a lot. And then the most recent that I was like, this is a life of luxury, was when we went to that restaurant. Oh, uh, it was... Um, m- m- you went to Frick. a restaurant that had bidets in it? Major Domo. In LA, Major Domo. Major Domo. I'm just going to hang out there, there the rest go. of the afternoon. Well, the food's amazing, Incredible but the toilet... Food. I mean, the toilet makes it. Do they have that person in the bathroom trying to hand you mints? Uh, no, I but I wouldn't be surprised person. if after you finish going to the bathroom, it just, a fucking is toilet, toilet, is the toilet was like, here you Does go. Does that happen at ladies' restrooms anywhere where there's like a, oh, a yeah. bathroom attendant? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, this toilet is like heated seat. Yeah. Mark Bell's yeah. got one in his house. Okay. Heated seat. It's like lit up like a freaking... Like a spaceship? Oh, yeah. I don't even know what well, all LED the buttons lights. do. And it like it just is more comfortable on the booty. Yeah. And then it has like a full remote and you mm-hmm. can change the angle of the spray yeah. and the temperature. So mine's not that fancy. I just do the bidet attachment. So it's like 30 bucks. Yeah. It just hoses you out like something like a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> it just gives you, you an just, enema. You yeah. take what you get. <laughs> really? You're getting an enema I'm every clean. time you sit on the toilet. <laughs> clean, finish, finish me. Look, at the end of the day, here's how I feel about bidet and any guy that's like not sure about it, which is amazing to me. Like if you, like I have a bit of facial hair, and if you looked at me and you were like, "Hey, you have a little shit on your face," <laughs> right? You, a little, little, little bit poop. I'm on not there. sure where it came from. We'll assume it's a your chunk. own, but you you have shit on your face, and I'm like, "Oh God!" And then like would panic, trying to run away from my own face for a second. And then if you handed me a dry paper towel to clean that off, I'd be like, this <laughs> right. isn't enough. This right. ain't going to do it. No, I need a shower. Yeah. Right. Yes. So yeah. why would I try to wipe peanut butter out of a shag carpet <laughs> with some dry napkin? <laughs> no. There's going to be residue. Give me a really Let's good rinse visual. that thing out. <laughs> that in my eyeball. Uh, that reminds me of what I was talking about, the butt wipes. is like, my, I, so at my family's house, now my whole family, they use we call them butt wipes yeah 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 mars is, mars used to i call them man wipes uh, whatever makes okay, you feel anyways. better <laughs> but his analogy was very similar to yours but he would just say like to my dad i remember the first time my parents came to my house and my dad went to the bathroom and was like what are i don't want to yeah i don't want to use this and i was like i'll get you toilet paper and um mars was like hey if you spilled something on your counter would you want to wipe it with a dry or a wet rag and then you have it. My parents switched a bit light to, bulb, to butt wipes. Light bulb now, Bing. even with a bidet or, or using wipes, I prefer to finish with toilet paper. Yes, to I don't dry like, it out. I don't you don't like want to keep the cheeks wet. Yeah, wet. I don't want yeah. a moist downstairs right. action. Yeah. Right. Makes no. sense. That, that, mm. Yeah, yeah you, go, that, you, go, you go wet, dry. dry. Right. I live in the South. It's swampy already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to dry that shit out. I'm not trying to add any extraness down there. You know what? They're, they grab an attachment that is a dryer. Uh, like they make them called hair dryers, and they can oh, choose yeah. temperature. Hair drying is Your wife's like, no, how about we don't do that? <laughs> he just I wafts mean, it around the house. I walk in, Mars is just with like a blow dryer back just, there. I'd put a leg up on the toilet. It's the only respectable way to do it. In the living room, like, oh, God. Friends he's, over, like, what's that smell? He's drying oh. again. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It smells right. like meat in your house. <laughs> 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 we had barbecue last night. Anyway, that, I'm sorry, that's disgusting. Hey, ba- but ba- I, have, I have a question really quick. Okay. Yeah. Do you wear anything under your kilt? Yeah, of course. Okay. 
There all right. So are there, are there people, are people that, don't? that don't? There are definitely people that don't. Not people competing. No. Okay. So it's not I would a normal be thing. A chafed, bloody mess. <laughs> okay. That's why I was wondering. <laughs> yeah. I was a yeah. bit of a heavy fella, as we remember <laughs> the previous talk. <laughs> There's not a time that my legs aren't touching each other. <laughs> I mean, you're They're very you're, close. You're practically a mermaid, just like me. <laughs> Basically, right? <laughs> mermaid. At mermaid. some point, like my my mermaid. my thigh gap is around my calves, <laughs> <laughs> so. The idea of like getting sweaty and competing uh, and spinning around and then drying off and getting sweaty again, like nope. Okay. Disaster. So, underwear just, for the for the, com- the competition. For sure. Okay. Um, now I've definitely been at games and like you'll catch a guy in the crowd the or like someone who wants to like flashing. take photos of you. And of course, if they're going to take You're photos, they get the some weird catcher stance and it's just <laughs> staring down the gun barrel, hog all hanging low. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're really gonna ruin this for me. I'm trying to win. The point when as soon as that happens, it's immediately just like trying to get your buddies to see it. Oh. Like, what's that over there? <laughs> Does he have gum on his pants? <laughs> Dude, looks like he sat in gum yeah. and he's just stretched out. Just like and everyone's just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, uh, enough okay. about that. Just because we don't have a ton of time left, and I want to know about. Your clothing brand, yep. and I want to know about your podcast, and all these listeners want to know about it too. Perfect. So my clothing brand is Hate Brand Goods. So H V I I I. It's spelled complicated. Um, five years in now, I realize it's a bit of a double edged sword there with it being spelled weird. So it's H with a Roman numeral eight, and uh, kind of the ethos behind it was that, like as an athlete, I just remember watching guys like. Dudes that were already top of the game, but you'd hear stories of like this guy's up at four in the morning running sprints and like pushing himself and doing this bit and like that being like that dude fucking hates himself more than I do. And so it kind of just boils down to that bit of like like, genetics are one thing and like whatever your gifts are and what you normally have and you, you can't do a whole lot about that. But like being outworked, that's a choice. Mm hmm. And like so fucking hold yourself accountable enough and not be your own friend enough to be like, you you deserve the day off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. You don't deserve anything. You want success? No one owes it to you. There ain't nobody sitting there standing ready to hand it out. Go get it. Yeah. And if that means sleep a little less, be a little bit more sore, do the work. Like, fucking hate yourself enough to do the work. It is. You got to be willing to work harder than your competition. Suffer. And always, and it's always, and you never question that they're taking a break. You, never. You, you always know that they're working hard as fuck and you better get going. Yeah. Yeah. Those are days that you're missing out, man, or minutes or whatever it is. Like, where can I steal that time or even with recovery or any of those type of things? And so that's really where the brand was kind of born. I'd wrote about it in a book that I did on training for the Highland Games and um, enough people asked for me to do a shirt. <laughs> and then I guess we're here five years later. And you got great stuff. You got athletes. Yeah, we have athletes we sponsor, which is which is fun. A kind of uh, powerlifting. We have some strongman folks, and we have some Highland Games people. And it's a, uh, it's weird. Yeah. That this is a thing and a job. Yeah. But I'm into it. Yeah. This is cooler for me than say, the last job I had, which was outside sales and like oil and gas industry. I, I much prefer waking up and doing whatever the fuck I want to every day. And hang out with really cool people that all want to hate themselves, you know? Yes. Yeah, (laughs) self-loathing. I want to hate myself more than you hate yourself. Self-motivation through self-loathing. Isn't that exactly what it's all about? (laughs) I mean, look, if I would have finished my career and been 290 and just looked in the mirror and been like, sweet. (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's not the same guy that's going out into a field to throw by himself four days a week. Like, no one's holding me accountable. I do that shit because I want to. Yeah. Like, I love it. And, like, day off, like, ain't nobody in there going to be like, you need to go train today. Ain't no one ever going to call me on it. No. So if I'm not going to hold myself to that line, no one is. If anything, you're going to have people that are like, they want your time too. Right. And so it's, they want to pull you and be like, you deserve this. And you're, and then. Deserve. And, you, and then sometimes you might be like, oh, well, yeah. Maybe. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I, do. I do. I deserve. I'm entitled. Fuck yeah. And off. then you remember like. <laughs> Wow, this is fun, but I think I'm loving myself too much. I probably should hate myself and go to the gym. A little bit. <laughs> Look, it- Sorry, guys. We don't mean hate yourself in like a really bad way. It's like it's hate yourself in a way that hard work to be the best at your sport. I, I'm going to say sport because that's how I, I compare it yeah. to that. Or in, in some cases, like business. It's it doesn't it. feel good. Like sometimes, like the work that you have to put in, like to be good for me, like at CrossFit or Olympic weightlifting or powerlifting or Highland Games, it's very painful. 
and you have to be comfortable being extremely uncomfortable. And it's a, it's an external fight on your body and it's an internal fight on your mind constantly. Right. And mine was always about the internal thing. I spent the entire time that I trained for my sport, I trained alone in my garage and in a field by myself. I didn't have coaches. I didn't have training partners because my, my schedule was weird. And so it's inconvenient to wait on someone else for their shit. Mm -hmm. And so you got to do it. Like I do this because this is what I signed up to do and that's what I want to do. And nothing's in the way of that. Mm -hmm. Motivational hate. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. You have, and Don't you... get me wrong. I'm not <laughs> mad at this thing. I'm a terrible narcissistic piece of shit. So. <laughs> I look in the mirror and I go, <laughs> no. Nice. <Fuck> <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. We're doing real good. You look like a before photo nice. now. <laughs> <laughs> that was like us in uh, Louisiana. So yeah. I was actually I was just with Matt. Um, if you guys follow my Instagram, because I was on my Instagram, we were doing a competition, girls from all different sports. But Matt was there. One, he lives in Louisiana. It's uh, true. He kind of lives all over the place, but yeah, lives in Louisiana. And he had an athlete, uh, Maddie Forberg. She yep. was our power lifter who was there, and. We were talking about how he could be a professional before model. Before model. <laughs> <laughs> I like, my, I like my body composition to be somewhere like memory foam. Like you could leave a handprint in it. Maybe I could pick up the Inca from a newspaper like Silly Putty. This, you know, this is basically like, the goals. And like like lean enough to like still feel look in, the, look in the mirror and be like, nice. Nice. Right. And like soft enough that like everyone just wants to lay on you like memory foam. Well, I don't want to be intimidating to people around. <laughs> that's, what, that's why I'll yeah, slap on a Speedo and we just really weird people out. We were laughing so hard. He goes, like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a professional before model. <laughs> right. I'm a professional after. Well, it's like, it's just always to me, right? Gina, like, you are a professional after model. Just <laughs> professional <laughs> after. She's just like, I'm a professional. I love that you I'm said. I'm a professional after you model. You said guys. it with so much confidence. <laughs> you just bombed. Hey, guys. People ask me to stand in for them all the time. Nice. It's really embarrassing. It's tough. Yeah, it it's is. It's a tough gig. It is. I it get is. it. Yeah. Uh, quick, what type of items do you have? So because you guys do. Yeah, we kind of do a little bit of everything. So yeah. hats and shirts and ladies' items. We have some singlets and. Uh, some backpacks and bags and cool. patches and yeah. Cool. All kind of things. And your podcast. Podcast is called Umso. Umso? Umso. And so I it's like that. it's uh basically a stutter word. Yeah, umso. Umso. <laughs> I think I do that most of the time. Right. Yeah. Um so anyway. I named that because my my interests vary a ton. And so like I want to talk to people in strength and fitness, like the realm that we're in, but like, I also want to have on my best friend who I've been friends with since third grade because we've done a bunch of dumb shit together and it's yeah. funny. And so I want to talk to whoever the fuck I feel like yeah, talking so. to. Right. And I can talk about whatever I want. I mean, I had Mike Rashid on yesterday and the podcast essentially just rolled into the recording of us talking about ayahuasca and psychedelics. <laughs> and I was like, fuck it. This is what we're going to get this into. This is it. Direction. We talked this about that. We talked about Carl Sagan and space a lot so <laughs> all over the place weird day <laughs> yeah you know i'm so yeah yeah let I'm it rip so. yeah you know that's what's kind of fun for like me and gina with a lot of the stuff that we do but when we were approached about well when i was approached about doing a podcast uh i'm so <laughs> yeah i, I was thinking about taken. it but i first was already <laughs> taken. Like, don't steal it um my tagline she uses i'm so at brooke will <laughs> yes. brooke Gibson, it's just better than mine i'm so it's just I'm so up. Yeah, mine, mine yeah. just no between longer. i'm so <laughs> brooke and gina no i did before that i had always been approached to people were saying you should do a podcast for the past couple of years and i thought no <laughs> one no i don't really want to start something that i can't like put a lot of effort yeah. into and two i didn't i didn't know a lot about how to start it and what happened is most things if not all things that i do uh they are they start because it's, it's all of a sudden it's like oh wow it's, it's the right time right right and that mine was that way too <laughs> yeah. so i was a guest on a bunch of podcasts for for a while mm -hmm. and seemed to be a guest people enjoyed having yeah same and i was traveling a lot and i was doing youtube stuff on my own and like kind of filming things where i wanted to you know show some of the people that I get to be around mm -hmm. and interactions I get to have. And then I kind of got done with wanting to edit video or film yeah. because a lot of time. I'm fucking 35 and I just feel old going into places and being like, what's up guys? I'm a fucking camera in my hand. What's up, Robin? I'm <laughs> vlogging. I look like a ding dong. And <laughs> oh, so wait, there's an age limit? <laughs> uh, for me there was. I have a bunch of fucking gray hair. Gina's like, Gina's I, like, like I guess I'll out. put I my vlog camera away. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to stop vlogging now, guys. It, to me, it just started feeling like it was taking away from like genuine interaction that I was having with yeah. people. Mm -hmm. And you know that those are the things that people would want to see. Like, for example, like y'all at the house, 
like us cooking and hanging out in the hot tub and, mm-hmm. and fucking off and laughing, like that's the stuff people want to see. But I also don't want to ruin it because it's for me too. Mm-hmm. Like this is a fucking cool moment. And so right. at some point that just overweighed so much of like I want to film it. Yeah. And so the podcast became a, a thing that I could hold these kind of long firm conversations with the people that I'm around. Uh-huh. And I, I really like it. Yeah, we, so I, I, one, well, I love doing everything with her and I love to put her on the spot. Yes. <laughs> and like I know, throw her in the spotlight. All right. So I'm taking this back. I'm taking this back from Brent. Yeah, I'm going to hide behind the microphone. So we had talked about it. Anyways, we won't get into too much of how we started, but we did, like when we were trying to pick what our, like what our thing what was. It was. Well, right. I kind of wanted to do it exactly like my YouTube channel. Like I already have, you know, a, a group of people that, like me for all of me and so that's same type of thing it's like there are so many things that we're going to talk about and I started to I was getting very nervous or like anxious about doing the podcast right because I'm like well what am I going to talk about how are we going to construct and build out our our you know episodes and content and like all these things and so I started talking to some people and they're like honestly it's a lot easier than you think and two I am really good at talking and I've done a lot of podcasts and I can talk for a long time and our Same. time I got the old gift by. of the gab as they would say. <laughs> so fast. And reminding myself that people like it's like they come to my Instagram well they come to my YouTube it's like they just want more content because they just want to be around you more yeah. in a way or hear from you more and they're not there because like, in our case they're not well some of you might be they're not necessarily here to like always learn something. Right. Like sometimes I think with us, they just want to have us a part of their day and they just want to hear the conversation and they just want to know what we have going on. And then occasionally, which is why we're going to start bringing more guests on because I want to learn something and I want to introduce really cool people or cool information or whatever to the audience so they are taking something away. Yeah. And you know, that's, sometimes that's what they it was might for leave me too, thinking, right? wow, that was pointless, but I laughed my ass off. You know, I didn't, I mean, there only can be so many videos out there talking about like three deadlift tips, right? Like I don't want to fucking make that video. <laughs> if, Seven minute AMs. Like there's a deadlift tip video and Ed Cohn filmed it. What the fuck else do I have to say? Yeah. Like I'm going to chime in? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and so like doing the podcast, like it's it's about that person's perspective, right? And And I think it's interesting because you see people try to do it. And don't have like the personality or depth of thought or, mm-hmm. or ability to hold conversation enough to really do it. Yeah. Right. And that was always weird to me, man. Like even when I was doing YouTube stuff, that you'd occasionally get around someone and realize that, like, oh, this this whole thing's a work. Yeah. Like you you don't have anything when the camera's off. And like that's that's not the person that I'm attracted to. Yeah. So well, we've enjoyed having you here. I've enjoyed being here. Yeah, and I know that we were actually going to do quite, quite a bit more stuff this week. Yes. but my schedule has changed. As it does, so this yeah. is a yeah. real yeah. weird world we oh, live yeah. in. Yeah, so we will definitely get together again soon. Of course. Can you let everyone know where they can find you? Yep, you can find me on the Instagrams at I Hate Matt Vincent. You can find me. Uh, <laughs> the brand is I Hate Brand Goods. I love that. And then. Um, um, so podcast is basically everywhere, Spotify, iTunes, mm-hmm. Stitcher, those type of things. Um, and then anything new that you are working on that you want to not really. tease? No? We got a, we have an apparel collaboration with Barbara Brigade coming out, mm-hmm. which is going to be pretty cool. So I'm excited about that. And, um, kind of a, it's kind of fun, right? Like, so the idea of Bart and I doing that together was this idea that like, we're not operating from this scarcity mindset that, that like, you deal with a lot of people that have, think that they have this stranglehold on this thing. And it's like, if other people figure it out, then we're fucked. Yeah. And like, man, like there's not X amount of success or happiness out there that we all have to share. Like we can all have it. Mm-hmm. And in fact, like, I believe that we're, we're stronger together. Mm-hmm. And so kind of the, the mindset behind our, our drop is like rising tide raises all ships. Like be part of it. Be part of the group and contribute and learn what you can from everyone you can. Matt Vincent for president. Oof, Matt it's a Vincent terrible 20, job. 20. Why would anyone yeah. want that job? <laughs> it's kidding. bad. Terrible. Ugh. Yeah, In let's fact, not even go down that road. Anyone who wants that job should immediately be eliminated from being able to run for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's why you're perfect, perfect for it. Right. That's actually true. Like anyone who probably would be the best sets out to do it isn't, you know, their goal isn't to just have that. They're probably already just doing what they can to make things better. 
I had a product idea the other day. Okay, well, let's hear that, that and then we'll, then we'll say goodbye. Okay. Maybe this is a thing you could push. We're familiar with colored chalk, right? Absolutely. Right? This is a thing yeah, that's existed. Yeah, yeah. Sidewalk do, chalk, kids. But like for lifting, colored oh, chalk, yeah, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm such a mom. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I was just thinking like hopscotch. Oh, nice. yeah, that's what I was so thinking. So colored yeah. chalk for lifting. Yes. Okay. Bright orange. Mm-hmm. Like flaming hot Cheetos color. Oh shit! <laughs> and, then, and then you could pack it into bags with the logo of like flaming hot Choc Toes. That's so you just look awesome. so fat lifting the whole time, just covered in <laughs> fucking just Cheeto like, dust. Dude, how funny it'd be too if like people didn't know about it. You're like, hey, you want to suck this cheese off my fingers? I bet, <laughs> I, could, I bet I could get people to put my fingers. In I their feel mouth. like it should be flavored. That should flavored just be your like everyday. Cheese. It should be flavored so you can actually eat it. <laughs> just try to get strangers to suck See your fingers. See how many people? <laughs> how many people I can get to like? How much to put my fingers in your mouth? Yeah, two dollars. Oh, I love it. That's really funny, actually. Yeah. Flaming hot chalk toes. We did an episode where you were talking about pube towels. <laughs> like a towel just for your pubes or a towel made of pubes? Like the type. <laughs> <laughs> That's By that was the a end good of question. it, when they're ready to That's take it question. out to the trash, it probably looks like it's made of pubes. Yeah. When you talking, say- about, talking about guys that, like, we, we can't get into it, but talking about guys who basically clean the, um, trim themselves into a towel, fold it up, and they save it. Yeah, this happens. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> What? Why? Why would anyone do that? Are they making a hair doll? Why would that be a thing? Because they're Is lazy. It it's got to be a lazy thing. Why wouldn't you just flush it down the toilet? Yeah, exactly. Lazy. But we I, we were saying it, and on the podcast, I was like, I'm like, I want to make towels that just say pube towel. Pube towel. Puebs. <laughs> Puebs. <laughs> I love Pueblo. God, I love you. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. Very fun. You guys, thanks for listening to Between the Reps with Brooke and Gina. Yeah, thank you. And uh, remember to what, Gina? Rate, review, and subscribe. Five yeah. star rating. Five what? star hey. rating. Yeah. Make sure what you guys you go check what? out. <laughs> top, top five. Yeah, top five, top five. I sh- six. Right? <laughs> Make sure you go and check out Matt's Instagram. Check out his Umso podcast and his clothing brand. Yay. And uh, we will see you and talk to you next time. Yes. Bye. See you.